skull kind of went back like ours did, mm -hmm. and then the cranium went kind of further back, mm -hmm. but it looked kind of soft. Okay. Didn't look hard. Okay. And their facial structure was? Looked kind of a little bit narrower, uh -huh. you know, but they looked human. And the women wore, there was a, a women, there was a woman and a guy. And the, the woman uh, was wearing uh, kind of like almost, not belly dancer, but... Like a, a veil? A veil, uh -huh. and kind of like meshy kind of clothes. Mm -hmm. Real drapey and flowy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they were real pale. Okay. Hmm. Wow. And their eyes were a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Some of, and some of them, their eyes were a little bit bigger. They're, they were pale. And, the, and during these debriefings, was this, was there something planetary being decided, or was it more galactic, or? I don't know. Uh, don't know. I don't know. I was just, I was sitting there reading what I was given to read and, and looking around. I, I was sitting there reading some of the uh, information about different groups that were talking about the Earth experiment. So you were more like an emissary messenger? I was there as a empath okay. to get a feeling of aggression or not untruthfulness of deception. Right, right, I got it. Yeah. I got that, like, they were looking for, yeah, yeah I get that. But I, w I, mean, I wasn't the only one. Right. Uh, there's three of us mm -hmm. sitting there with the... Uh, the group we were with, and we were like sat down low to where, I mean, no, you, like when you're um, like an amphitheater, almost, or well, no, I mean like you know when you're you see people at the judge or whatever right, that right, thing right. that goes around, like they were sitting higher, the people we were with, and like we were sitting down lower uh -huh. to where like we were like this, huh. okay. and we're sitting there looking at our material and kind of. Uh, if we have had any feedback, we were supposed to give them feedback, but we were, I think we were all just pretty much all, you know, like, what the hell, whoa, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, it was supposedly the Earth was some big, um, kind of, it, like, really freaked me out when I watched uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh -huh. at the end when, you know, it was like the Earth was just some big experiment for some inquisitive other interdimensional right. that wanted to know the meaning of life and that kind of stuff. It was like basically saying that kind of crap, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, saying, you know, all these different people created us and came in and manipulated us and were all claiming some sort of dominion over us or creation of us. and. Mm -hmm. And bickering or fighting about, and and we didn't know what to think of it, and we didn't know our genetics studies and that kind of stuff. We had gotten, we had asked for, and received genetic information from them, and and then all this kind of stuff. And some mat, some stuff matched, some stuff didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, so they were, were trying to make sense of it all. Right. Um, there is such a, a large body of, of information. I always keep telling people we're, we're swimming in a sea of, of intelligence. And I mean, what's happening for me right now as I'm listening to you is like this information is coming into my field and I'm, I'm, I'm connecting some dots, um, specifically with AI stuff. I'm very, very uh, aware of that and working with the group that we're working with, uh, what we keep finding. And I have to say, working very leery of AI. Stuff. Oh, we yeah. You told us to be aware, and we don't go into the AI thing. But there's there's layers and layers and layers to it, obviously. And um, some which, of the crashes, uh -huh. and retrievals, right, were actually um, on purpose. Were um, Trojan horses right. sent here, right. so we would build Pick up. up this kind of stuff right. to give the AI median down here to travel right. and be amongst us right. and be able to interface with us. We needed to have a few minutes break here to walk around and shake some things off and so now we're back with part two of this audio. 
so we were just kind of picking up where we left off, and we were, I was asking you, you went back to that place where you were in that meeting conference hall where mm -hmm. you were sent there to pick up information for your handlers, I guess, mm -hmm. call them, and how you were talking about the different races again and uh, the presences of beings and the olive skin women, how beautiful they were and uh, the presence they held and how you were feeling personally was just intimidated, not sure if it was going to be a good experience or a bad experience for mm -hmm. you. And how after the meeting was over, uh, you were taken back and then you were given the injection again and you gave the download. Yeah, typical right? debrief. Typical debrief. So there was three of you, right? Yep. And so you were all debriefed, and so what we were saying... Separately. Yeah. So what we were saying was that you were more like a, a vessel or a container. They sent you into a space to pick up with certain things you were looking for, tuned to. And then they debriefed you. They emptied you out, basically, like a flash drive. And then, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, and then at that point, you don't have cognition of what you actually picked up. Mm -mm. You were just the flash drive for them, and yeah. then you started. I, to I know about what they wanted. To, they wanted us basically to pick up on deception, possible threats, just you know anything. I guess they should be watching out for. Right, any threat against them right. per se. Yeah, mm -hmm. the language that was being spoken. None of us understood. It was some sort of universal language that I guess most people there understood. There was one person doing some sort of sign language that reminded me of the uh, sign language I saw Native American elders using mm -hmm. uh, on the reservation when I was younger. If there was any telepathic stuff going on, we weren't picking up on it or it wasn't directed to us. But uh, what we were given reading material to read and absorb, but also to keep our logical minds occupied so we could pick up things without reading into things right. to naturally pick up on threats and whatever. Right, so a, 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 a part of your brainwave or activity was being separated from the logical brain that would have overwritten anything that was coming in. Right. That, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then afterwards we did the typical thing. We went in, got a shot. I remember the shots always were kind of like tetanus shots. They burned. In the arm, in the muscle? In the arm, mm -hmm. in the shoulder, or in the hip, usually in the shoulder. Except when I was really young, they always get it to you in the hip. Then they would do the thing where they would start talking to you and then regular voice and talk to you to where you would kind of start fading away and kind of getting listless and um, <clears throat> when I was younger that's when they would like kind of read you like a kid's story and then show you like a kid's kind of movie that would turn into kind of like a dream scenario so that would become a screen memory or a dream memory mm -hmm. for you I guess the chemical then somehow blank slated your memory of whatever they wanted to target. I don't mm -hmm. know. What I was starting to get into uh, was that they found that they could only uh, use this chemical on you a certain amount of times before it started causing neurological problems mm -hmm. or uh, behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. Like psychotic breakdown, breaks. yeah, different mm -hmm. things like that. So they started with having psychotic breaks with reality. I, I yeah. guess I, I don't mm -hmm. know that I had that, but that was. They ended up moving to having little, just little devices that were battery run that hand remote controlled. They would use. They didn't. They didn't need to give shots or use chemicals at all anymore. Frequency or yeah, frequency. electromagnetic pulse or something. Yeah, like that. I, I think it was just a frequency. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would, they could, they could hide it, you know, under like leaves around or around. It, it just had to be around in a certain area. And uh, they put uh, kind of like earwigs in uh, communication devices that intelligence or whatever people use that you can't see on. They go pretty far mm -hmm. in. Uh, they would put uh, one of those in each ear to where they could. Uh, it also worked kind of like noise canceling devices. You shoot a gun, mm -hmm. uh, as you pull the trigger, the sound wave causes the 
uh, electronics to close, I guess, a circuit mm -hmm. in it to where you don't hear the blast of the gun mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Uh, they had some sort of things in their ears to where they weren't affected. Hmm. It had to work with the way it vibrated the bones in your ears and went into your neurology. Mm -hmm. But they would use that, and then also the tone of their voice, the way they would talk to you, and then their body language. They would look at you and nod and mm -hmm. talk to you in a certain way and look at you in the eyes, and you would start to fade and feel mm -hmm. a certain way. And then they would get you into that mode without right. using chemicals. But um, when you are during the time, you were, did you were you exposed to that too? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So by now, I don't know what they have. Right. But what you were saying that was so chilling, really, and we we this part of the conversation we didn't get on tape was like how actually you left that whole scenario feeling like we are just human race, we're just really cattle. We're just oh yeah. A resource for these other groups and how yeah. you were a throwaway piece of technology. Yeah, like like, you know, oh this thing's out of batteries, you know, shake it around a little bit, okay, and throw it aside reach in our bag and grab another one out. Right, you know. right. He's the outdated model now anyways. Yeah. Right, now we yeah. have more sophisticated manner of, of programming people and right. using them. And, um, yeah. and still, mm -hmm. we're... we're that's, we, that's why I'm, I'm still pretty uncomfortable with a lot of the terminology used in the MyLab topics uh -huh. and uh, Super Soldier and all that stuff that's thrown around because even in the subcategories, there's sub-subcategories that how they, you know, break you down, you know, like, even, we were talking about, uh, you, you mentioned a crystal cavern, and, you know, and I uh -huh. kind of yeah, raised you. my eyebrows, because they took us to, I don't remember how we got there, but we were brought, uh, the people who were more empathic were brought to a crystal cavern, it was really, really hot mm -hmm. in there, but we were told the crystals were alive, we were not allowed to touch them, if we touched them, we would could damage them or they would damage us mm -hmm. that we were to reach out with our minds to them and they would either accept us or reject us mm -hmm. and um, that was some sort of test and uh, some of them had a when we reached out with our minds had a pink or a blue energy field mm -hmm. or aura around them mm -hmm. I don't know how that came up in our conversation but when you mentioned well we were talking about how many people are right now penetrating into these different realities that are around yeah. us all the time and so for you what I said was that as a group session that we were doing which we call planetary planetary impasse or planetary healing uh, that we were uh, shown down into some crystal caverns now mm -hmm. I the way I found them was another member said was talking about the mantle uh, the sub convection planes that are under the mantle, under the lava flows. You know, we've got mm -hmm. the crust of the world, and then there is movement under it. Yes. And I found it deeper down than that. And then we found ourselves as a group going into these crystal caverns, and then I was speaking of somebody else I was sharing that with, and they had talked about another uh, woman that was going into these crystal caverns. Yeah. And how I call it... Did they describe it as hot and hard to breathe? Uh... See, I, I didn't go in in the physical, but I a lot of times during any session I will get uh, out of breath or I'll get hot or my body will break into a sweat, and I can't recall if it was during going into the crystal or not. But yes, yeah, so we were calling them resonant chambers. They're memory chambers. They are the live part of the planet. I, I have no doubt of that at all. So I was just sharing that with you, and that popped you into mm -hmm. telling me Because the adults it. didn't go in. Because no. it was like... We could only stay in there for like 20 minutes. Right. And uh, we Do you think, again, you were being used to pull information out of these crystals? To be I, debriefed or? I don't know. I think they were wanting to say, see which of us could connect with the crystals. Right. right. Well, they're, 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 I mean, for me, they're, <clears throat> they're, they're high frequency memory, memory and mm -hmm. uh, energy conductors. And so I wonder if they were using you the same way they were prior to that where they were putting you into these spaces and you were picking up the information that was there. If so, that was removed. I don't right, know. you wouldn't remember that because of it. I just remember that it was, uh, the short memory I have of it was, I was probably 
10 or 11. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember it was, I couldn't hardly breathe. It was like, I'm talking like 120 degrees or more. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the crystals were quite big. Mm -hmm. And they weren't like the ones that they showed in Mexico that were not that far underground on TV. Uh, probably 10 years back. Mm -hmm. the, I think they were made of quartz. You couldn't quite see. These were like um, pretty much crystal clear with mm -hmm. some inclusions in them. Okay. Uh, Large? Like yeah. Uh, what size? Like uh, probably 18 inches to or larger around mm -hmm. and coming a, a good probably seven feet out of the sides on mm -hmm. the ground and they kind of crisscross. Some are smaller, some are larger. Right. Wow. And do you, do you always have memory of this, or does it come and go, or um, do, you have, do you have any... Well, I mean, I always have... Yeah, I've always had memory of it, but I didn't know... I didn't have any context. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like it was a dream or right. something. I mean, after I had that eye surgery and I had that full recall... Mm -hmm. And then um, I blabbed all that stuff to the people in the recovery room. I think I wrote up a thing in the Avalon forum about that. Right. It kind of freaked some people out at Parkland Hospital. Yeah. And then I, I was in really bad shape because I remembered some of the negative stuff I was a part of that I did. And because uh, I was a part of the other side of the table <clears throat> of some of the stuff I'm talking about. And uh, I don't remember a lot of that because I had some very kind visitors that came and helped me forget. Okay, right. Yeah, that uh, they told me I there was no productive or good reason for me to have those memories. And they helped me uh, forget them. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> between that incident and the last couple of weeks, what I've gone through with getting rid of those entity attachments, mm -hmm. you know, I've been able to access a lot more mm -hmm. and obviously talk a lot more. I sure. mean, last time you were here, I, could, I couldn't get probably 10 words into any of this before yeah. I emotionally locked up. You touched with me today, you know, on some of the most um, nefarious of things that are being ha are happening right now. And I feel like if we don't keep our eyes open, if we don't keep seeing what it is, if we don't see, uh, you know, the AI influence amongst us, if we don't see the transhumanist agenda that's out there. And I loved Alex Jones yesterday or the day before. You know, when he's on, he just taps right into it. And what he was saying was basically, no, no, I will not agree, agree to that. I, you know, he mm -hmm. basically is just saying, I won't agree to that. And the only way I cannot agree to it is by seeing it and calling it out. And that's the only way we're going to change things. Yeah. And so I'm, you know, I get my my own inner rants about certain things myself. And There's a lot of people that are seeking out the AI. Sure. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Right. You know, I mean, I see these black ops groups and all these other groups that are working, even the white hat groups and stuff, are going through great pains to screen any type of AI influence mm -hmm. from interfering in their technology or their operations. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Mm -hmm. It can't be a good thing. Right. You know, right. And uh, some of the crash retrievals that occurred early on were definitely Trojan horses sent mm -hmm. by that AI and were to help us develop these technologies to where it could um, interface with us directly. Right. Not all, you know, just a, a small portion, but just enough to, you know, help us get kick-started. Yeah. yeah, but even, you know, I think you well remember on the forum, it's hard to talk about the forum as an experience to people that haven't been part of it, but it's sort of like a growing 
body of intelligence between all of us, but what was it in February of 2013 when we were all getting invaded by bots, the spiders, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, this isn't, you know, this isn't mass hysteria. <laughs> I mean, they were literally flooding the, the network. No, we used those in the intel. Yeah. yeah. We, um, you know, people were seeing them uh, appear in their rooms. Oh, um, yeah, you're talking about the, the black the spiders. spiders. Yeah. yeah. No, you that, know. no, I know that that's, that's something also that goes along in the interview process. That's a part of the AI. Right, exactly. Uh, if you are seeing certain shadows out of the corner of your eye, or if you see when you're on a keyboard, if you've seen, you're asked if you've seen shadow spiders. If you've seen shadow spiders, then you're screened heavily for that AI. Right, right. Yeah, and so. But yeah, I did. I did see that on there. Yeah, I mean, we went through that for for quite a period there, and uh, you know, we actually identified uh, a couple of the new members as AI. I know, I know of one right now. Yeah, on the forum right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So there we are. You yeah. know, and yet we have this interaction, and part of it is, you know, part of it is too. You know, there's other AI influences we could say that are benevolent in and of themselves too, because there's some that we've created. You know, that that are just like off of that TV show, The Person of Interest. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got AIs that were created by humans. We've got several different uh, AIs that that live on huge uh, quantum computer networks mm -hmm. that have supplanted themselves onto other networks done just like on the TV show that have uh, repurposed other areas and had other networks built, you know, built a shell corporation and then mm -hmm. gone rogue on, on them, you know. Mm -hmm. And they've had to, they have, they have to watch over the AIs they create very carefully, <laughs> you know. So... Yeah, they are watching over the AIs they create very carefully. So the AI, the one AI that does not come from this planet, uh -huh. that they're extremely, extremely worried about, is um, that they're playing with fire, you know. Sure. And uh, they're, they're, I guess that Prometheus. Uh, the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, not movie. I'm I'm talking about the actual. Greek story oh, the or, Greek, you know, yeah, for me, brought yes, fire, fire to earth, earth yeah. you know, the knowledge to earth that could be an AI <laughs> that brought mm -hmm. uh, the knowledge to earth in the form of a crashed flying saucer, you mm -hmm. know? Right. And, you know, we picked it up from the desert and well, we talk about, I mean, if you look at the Gnosticism and you listen to John Lash or John or Jay Widener or any of that, you know, we, we speak in many languages. I mean, that's what I'm beginning is we can speak in the language of science or we can speak in the language of, of mysticism. But when we speak of the archons or the attachment or the parasitical attachment, I'm starting to see it more as this AI attachment um, that... It almost feels like, and some say it came into uh, during the creation time, during the creation mythology or whatever, the creation mm -hmm. here, something attached at that moment and has been steadily making its way like a good parasite does. It just stays, it doesn't kill its host, it just stays there propagating. And um, But then we're talking... AI intelligence, and we're not, and so we're talking about conscious intelligence that's actually yeah. an expanding intelligence of its own. Yeah. You know, so people think of robots that you program on a computer and you turn off a switch, no. and it ain't like that. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. But that's what. We can't imagine it. No. It's, it's a like a bi biological, uh, artificial intelligence. Matrix. Mm -hmm. It's basically uh, it's got a um, a presence in our solar system, and with that, with throughout the galaxy, and uh, has uh, relay stations throughout interstellar space, mm -hmm. and it's a network, it's a big giant wireless network. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you traveled outside the solar system yourself? I don't recall. No. Uh, well, not in a ship. No, but in RV uh, remote viewing. 
Oh, remote meditation. viewing, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. I've traveled just outside the galaxy just in remote viewing. Yeah. Okay. Were these your own induced sessions, or did you do this? Both. Under? Both. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, traveling uh, in the, the portal gates, I've mm -hmm. been to, I don't know where all it, it was. I mean, I wasn't told this is, you know, you are here. I was, you know, like a Six Flags map, you know. Right, right. And, you know, here you, you are. are here. Yeah. You know, I, no. I don't know where I was. Mm -hmm. In fact, that one place I told you where I came out and out, they're just outside kind of a cave entrance, you know, I saw that steaming, very pale blue water with, you know, people there having R&R &R and up in the purplish sky I could see far out there a couple of moons or whatever I don't know anything in this solar system that fits that that fits that so I don't know if it was just a nearby star or another I don't know mm -hmm. I don't know where it was um, if I was told I was tabula rasa or blank slated or whatever right and if I would go to a regression therapist or whatever I probably would be able to pull a lot of this information mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully the people that helped me lock away those memories that were very detrimental to me locked them away well enough to where I wouldn't unlock them. Mm -hmm. That's just like anyone that I see anyone even with these topics you know, on the circuit or whatever, they act like they have all the answers or they know everything. I'm just, oh my God. <laughs> Not even like some of the top people in these programs know everything. You know? Well, that's why, they need, <laughs> that's why they need you and they need all the assets because anybody that's actually manipulating at that level is dependent on the assets they have. You yeah. know, I mean... They're feeding, they're getting information from someone. And they're feeding it up. Yeah. The chain. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the key... There's always up the chain, up yeah. the chain. Well, that's, you know, one of the things that James asked me, too. He said, well, have you ever uh, dealt with any reptilian races? And I said, yeah, I have quite a bit, actually. And um, the thing that really will change anybody's consciousness, whether it be whatever race they're from, um, is once they turn around and realize that they might think they're at the top echelon of the, of the game structure, and then when they get to that conscious level and they look and they actually turn around and see that they're actually being used, and that the things they've been told are lies, and that there's something above them manipulating them, and that they're food for somebody else, they're, they're all of a those sudden... Those beings are very afraid of another type. Hi everyone, this is Bill Ryan here from Project Avalon and Project Camelot, and if you got to this point in this extraordinary conversation, and I'll call it a conversation rather than an interview because, because it really was just a, a conversation, you may be just as astounded as I was by some of this information. I know this person, although I've never met him personally. He's, he's a long-standing Avalon Forum member of the, of the highest integrity. Up until this conversation, he'd never come forward with anything like this amount of detail of his own experience. And I didn't even know much of this myself. Of course, after I heard the audio, just as you have done, I had a bunch of questions. As you listening to this now, you probably have yourself. So I wrote up some questions for Christine to put to him. And she was able to do this a week later. And what you're about to hear is a second conversation, which is equally informal and it's recorded with a small pocket dictaphone, just as the first one was, in which she was able to pose some of my questions. Now, at that time, even then, it wasn't clear whether any of this would ever be made public, and I was assuming that this would primarily be for just my own research purposes and, and maybe those of a few trusted colleagues who would keep this very tightly off record. But then our friend decided he wanted to go on record, and so it's our pleasure and privilege to support him in this. This is what we're doing now. In future conversations, we'll make sure the audio quality is a little better. But I'm confident you will have been able to pick up most of what's being talked about here. And we'll certainly supplement it with a transcript as soon as we can. 
So thank you for bearing with us, and now you can enjoy another half hour of enlargement on one or two of these very huge issues. Thank you. I'm going to try to lead into this some sort of way. I'll just go with what Bill's written here because his background is so... Uh, and this is probably the biggest one. Have you had any inkling or is there any information as to what is the nature of the experiment? I, mean, I think a lot of us have come to that at least startling, kind of shocking conclusion that we're part of some sort of experiment. Have you, had any, have you made any conclusions yourself? Uh, just that? what I saw, that it had been an experiment that had been going on. It seemed not like the time frame that I'd seen of 250,000 years, but like millions of years. All these different groups, according to this document that we looked at several times that we were flipping through on tablets before tablets were the m mainstream. Okay. Except they weren't tablets. They were kind of like a piece of plexiglass. Kind of like they show in the movies right now? I guess. Yeah. Like where you have a kind of like a screen. That you can move things around on, yeah, or yeah, just, it was yeah. like a screen, like plexi, kind mm -hmm. of like plexiglass. If you you'd hold it, you could see your fingertips through it mm -hmm. until it became opaque or whatever with a page. Anyway, reading through, there are all these different groups that were claiming that, and I think I covered this before, that they were our creators and had all put forth to us current humans that they were our creators and there was evidence in our DNA that there was some of their DNA there. Now none of it jived with any of the other group's information so it was all really confusing. Mm -hmm. It was like they were all claiming authority and kind of poo-pooing the other groups uh, to a certain degree. Kind of like there is a university and there's some big breakthrough research and you've got 22 little working groups and they're all writing their theses and they're writing their thesis from their perspective and they're all aware of the other theses and they're writing it in competition to the other ones mm -hmm. and... Uh, retorting the other ones at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have all those together, and us with our limited knowledge have all have these stack of like 22 theses and are trying to make sense of it. And it wasn't making any sense. Hmm. Especially when we were running into human beings that 25, 35, 75,000 years ago, supposedly were humans evolved on the planet mm -hmm. here had societies civilizations that had risen fallen they were breakaway civilizations like we have mm -hmm. with space programs higher technology using the portals usually they were instead of scientists they were kind of priests or a caste system like mm -hmm. that but there were all these types of people and all of their civilizations were wiped from the face of the earth during whatever cataclysms and stuff that mm -hmm. happened I mean every once in a while you'll hear of somebody in a mine smashing open a rock and finding something out of place some out of place artifact or something right. and they'll attribute it to a civilization that we don't know about. There were more than a handful of these ancient breakaway civilizations that were still hanging around and had pr a presence in the solar system okay. and underground on the earth. On the earth. Yeah. So how many and, different groups do you think? Uh, it was the, of no. the breakaway ancient civilizations mm -hmm. It was five to seven or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was like just right around a handful. Okay. And then you said then there's the other yeah. extraterrestrial. Yeah. I guess they were extraterrestrial. Oh. They were human, just different looking people. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And uh, I didn't, you know, they didn't point and say that person's from Alderaan B, that person's from, I didn't, I don't remember getting any of that. If I got that information, it was taken away. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Can I just, for continuity purposes, when you were in this conference, the way you described it, a somewhat tiered conference. There were room. a bunch of those. Yeah, so there was different groups from all over, and but you were there at the behest of the military. I mean, that was your program. That's what they were running you with. They were putting you in that place. Too. These guys weren't military. No, they weren't. Okay. No. I guess, I guess the military were the ones that chose us to go in and observe with them, mm -hmm. but they were more like ambassadors. Or the ones in the conference, but you the, were sent the, in the, by the, the, uh, the... current era breakaway civilization humans were more of ambassadors mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. A and diplomatic corps? Or yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It seemed as though they were seated kind of in a way of like they weren't given the best seats in the house. So there seemed to be a hierarchy of how people were seated in the in the arena, as it were. <laughs> well, the others seemed to be all somewhat equal. Oh, okay. But the humans, it seemed, were... Some of them, I think, didn't want the humans there, mm. probably. And some of them did. Okay. So the current era humans were there. Okay. For That's... For whatever reason. Right. Were there. Never was made clear. <laughs> yeah. And they were there. I never heard. I mean, they weren't talking. They, they were observing. Mm -hmm. And they were really just trying to figure out what the hell was going on. What mm -hmm. the, what, what's the truth? You know, what's, what's going on? Looking for intel data. Yeah. Um, and in those, I did not see the breakaway civilization groups, ancient humans it was all the people of different mm -hmm. origin right except for some the people would rotate that would come in that were the ambassadors every once in a while they would look like they were not like you would picture a nazi caucasian kind of uh, elitist mm -hmm. some of them almost look like they were picked from like a jungle from the Amazon or something and dressed ceremonially right. or whatever. So like native garb or something yeah. from wherever they... Right. Yeah, and they and they would be there like with another right. person, but we, we would still be sitting below the aisle, the post mm -hmm. thing that came up, mm -hmm. you know, just to where our, above our n nose, you know, we could just barely peek over. Did you feel that, I mean, that type of seating, did it make you feel lesser or, I mean, there obviously was some purpose to... Yeah, I mean, we, uh, yeah, I felt, yeah, it was, it was like very well removed. Mm -hmm. It was obvious with from what we were reading that the, I'll call him ambassador, mm -hmm. current era ambassador, felt in the dark and somewhat removed mm -hmm. from the process from the UN type whatever gathering. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of beings that are visiting Earth that look nothing like humans. Mm -hmm. They weren't there. Okay. And I remember you mentioned the most striking to you was the olive skinned yeah. man and two women, right? With long, long dark hair. Did yeah. there seem to be any seniority in the way that they were communicating with each other? Or you said that or they were just No. 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 There was tension. Okay. I know there was tension. I remember mm -hmm. feeling there was tension between them, but it was kind of just a, I guess you would say like a UN, like mm -hmm. a, I guess not everybody there was in total agreement about everything. Mm -hmm. Did you get the sense that, I am guess I'm just like doing my own thing too, because we talk about this experiment and we're human resources, because you mentioned that earlier too, where at some level we're just viewed as a resource, uh, like cattle, like that that was very much how i felt we were kind of looked right. at like inviting we, the okay interesting kind so of so they might have been even trying to determine who had more ownership well i don't know about that it's mm -hmm. just that some of them i think we were offensive or filthy to them 
Okay. Uh, that's just a sense yeah. of it. Oh, it's just a, that, that's a big question. I don't think we're, you know, happening. But I, I, I didn't get, I mean, that's just a sense. Mm -hmm. But there was this one language that was being spoke, and there was no writhing of language. Da, da, da. It was just real monotone. That they were talking, and like I said, that there was always one person, and from different, they would rotate, have different people up there doing that weird sign language thing. I know there had to be telepathic stuff going on. We weren't getting any. I don't know if the ambassador, human guy, or girl, or whoever was in there at the time was getting any communication or not mm -hmm. but we weren't mm -hmm. again you know we're looking. I had no idea what they were talking about yeah I had no, no idea it what it was about yeah. I the itineraries the agenda of the me I had no idea what mm -hmm. it was about right right it's it didn't it doesn't answer the fundamental question I didn't have know, the what's the purpose of our experiment I didn't have the you need know. to know no yeah. and I don't know what the purpose was they all had different things but like I said the one thing that stuck out was like that movie Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy an experiment of beings that had complete free will and a full range of emotions to have an experience f to get like the true meaning of life mm -hmm. That, I remember that came out. Okay. But that, kind of like Duncan O'Finian said, mm -hmm. that was kind of a misnomer because every single group had their thumb in the pie, manipulating everything from the right. very beginning. Mm -hmm. So there was no free will. Or, I mean, everything was manipulated from... Right. So, but maybe what we're, you know, there is some aspect that... I, I mean, just the fact that there would be present time humans in such a meeting and that you would be present. I mean, they're obviously, it wasn't random that you would have been there. In other words, they probably were looking for specific characteristics and I know you were trained to pick up information and be downloaded. But And I think they were also, they were wanting to know why some of us were there. I guess part of the humans being there was to see how we were reacting to all of that. Mm -hmm as part of the same experiment as the same experiment yeah. right and like you said uh, clear manipulations clear genetic encoding they sh seem to have some sort of yeah but i didn't in the pie as but I, I didn't feel like everyone was staring at us no, no. like we're under a microscope or anything no no i just felt like they were pretty much ignoring us doing their own thing and we just happened to be there like mm -hmm. flies on a wall right yeah but you were there nonetheless you were there yeah. i mean and that itself probably says as much as probably can be drawn from that in a way yeah. it's the fact that you were there maybe somebody not as close to it as i was can draw some conclusions sure. from it well, i don't know you know yourself just to give you a little feedback on what i've heard from you talking to me is that you were actually uh, programmed to pick up a lot of information and later it was basically mm -hmm. taken out of you and then you were wiped so really don't have any way of knowing exactly, but you must have been chosen to be picking up a wide range of data and information. How that got used by the present day humans, of course, is right. not right now present, but the and, fact that you were there is... And there were two other, always... Two other. Two others mm -hmm, sure. that probably had different abilities sure. that, were, that were doing different things. Yeah. So That's one thing I've noticed in our group workings, that when we triangulate the information, mm -hmm. when we've got three in a field, you get a much completer picture. Yeah, well, triangulation is one of the basis of most military operations. Yes. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's just we're learning from the, what we're remembering. <laughs> That's how I see it. So, uh, in a lot of our minds. I also, and this was something that I have here as a question, but it also was for me too. Is like you said, some of the crashes were actually for the process of bringing in some sort of AI or mm -hmm. Trojan horse. I read that, yeah. This is a two prong question, and I think we might answer it in similar ways or different. It doesn't matter. But why wasn't that just injected directly into the into the human genome or into us directly through blood? Trans they tried that. Uh huh. They tried that over and over. Supposedly, still on the planet, somewhere deep under the Earth's surface, 
under ice or under or whatever are the nanotechnology that when in the presence of living beings mm -hmm. will migrate and find its way to get into the pores and then they showed something like that on the X-Files where you know this little kid fell in a hole and he's like look what I found and he put, puts up a bone mm -hmm. and then like this black stuff went into his hand and then his eyes went mm -hmm. black right you know yeah. right well I think that was their way of putting out some information but they, they did that with nanotech okay so but that was it wasn't reliable it, it didn't work out that well and once it was figured out, the former civilizations found a way to combat it. Because it was too blatant or too obvious, or the effects of it were it, too It immediate? just, it wasn't efficient. Okay. It wasn't an efficient way to distribute the bioelectric signature of the artificial intelligence. Okay. Now, one of the other things that's still done is, okay, it's transmitted through electronics but also through viruses bacterias they're biological but they have a chemistry which creates an electric field mm -hmm. and within that electric field can exist this artificial intelligence signal mm -hmm. and as the biological virus or whatever spreads from human to human it can also spread the ai mm -hmm. but to what end without technology without wireless without us having the technological propulsion to be able to be a true extension of what it needs to do mm -hmm. so what if it has some drones down here I mean, it's like, you know, playing that game, um, that mod game or whatever on com on the computer mm -hmm. to where, you know, you can build up empires and then right. they collapse. So what? Right. So what's the purpose of that other than playing somebody? Yeah. Else? Right. You know, they need to have an infrastructure mm -hmm. and the ability to have propulsion, locomotion beyond bipedal mm -hmm. or quad pedal <laughs> horses, <laughs> right. you know, and all that are riding on ships blown by the wind. Mm -hmm. You know, it needed they needed to bring us up technologically. So that was the purpose of the Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. Now Roswell and all the different crashes, mm -hmm. that's only like probably maybe four or five percent of all the crashes that have happened. Mm -hmm. There are a great, great deal more. Right. Do you, um, I know there's some people that think Roswell was a PSYOP diversion. No. Have that, you had, do you have any information on that? That was a real crash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was just, you know, working in the field of info and disinfo, you know, they're going to throw everything out there mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So was that a, a, one of those events where they were bringing in something specifically because, I mean, there's the Trojan that horse was, which comes into... That the, was along the uh, 36th, 37th parallel. Right. There is a natural, not on the earth, but up in the atmosphere, there are natural portals that open up mm -hmm. along the 36th or 37th parallel north. And you may find that a lot of crashes sightings, weird sightings of beings that have, there's not even UFOs involved. Mm -hmm. Weird things like that occur along that vector. Mm -hmm. So, it, like the crash was a real crash. It was an inadvertent craft that got, came down through a portal or? Well, they were, supposedly it came in and it was coming in and out of portals. They knew that they had been observing them coming in and out of portals of different types for a while mm -hmm. and this one was brought down somehow. I've seen on the internet just like everyone else high-powered radar. I don't know if that's true or not. Right. I don't know how it was brought down but mm -hmm. supposedly that was intentionally brought down. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
we'll, we'll stick a little bit with the uh, the whole theme of the AI and mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, I've had my own experience it's not the time to say it but not in the same real life situation you have much more on a telepathic level and Bill also has one of the things that he's found and I have actually now too is that in these big AI computers in these big centers where there's actually the machinery quite often there can be a being or an intelligence yeah. that trapped in that mm -hmm. and he had the experience of freeing one in a session where he actually because some of these being intelligence seem to be trapped in there they're not even I whether they're they're created in that space or but they're still conscious beings right yeah, um, or they're being captured from somewhere and and embedded in, in a system I'm not sure supposedly there's another reality or dimension or whatever to where the median of that universe or whatever is purely electrical or whatever and the sentient beings are electrical and when they are pulled here by mistake or on purpose they have to have an electrical medium to mm -hmm. hardware exist on yeah hardware and then by definition they're ai mm -hmm. okay but, but this is, this that's, is, that that's, is a definition that is aren't... that's kind of a definition but yeah. th that's not exactly what they are uh -huh. they're not an ai they're not an artificial intelligence. They're an intelligence. They're an intelligence that's captured in an artificial medium. In an artificial environment. Yeah. But okay. their home environment is a, uh, you know, we, they talk about the electric universe mm -hmm. and all that kind of Another reality that is, that is their natural environment. Right. So it would be, if we could just visualize it ourselves from our point of view, would be something like, a very large intelligent network somehow all interconnected with each other along some sort of via of... I guess that's yeah. all the information I yeah. have. Did I, you get that from something you saw in a visionary state or something that you got from Intel? No, the, of all of the stuff they talked about, about AIs and stuff. Is what? All the information that I read and was talked party to about to. AIs. You, okay, yeah. you were party to. Yeah. Okay, which is important to yeah. note the difference because... Because uh, I worked in the communications and electronics and uh -huh. that kind of stuff. Right, so right. I, I had to be knowledgeable and careful of Right, yeah, and the one... AI. Right, you have to be careful. Mean, I had to be screened... Yeah, I, that's the one thing when you were speaking before that stood out to me so uh, markedly was that you were always scanned for if you had picked up some other AI influence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just underlining the importance of that. We're calling it AI, right? But there's obviously some other entities uh, yeah, out there. Some of, some of it is just I, intelligence, right. but it's from another reality right. that is just not compatible with ours. Uh-huh. And yet there seems to be a big plan to try yeah. to merge that into our... Like Star Trek has like portrayed fluidic space uh -huh. to where, you know, space is actually like an ocean on a, in another dimension or right. whatever. You know, we wouldn't be compatible with that. Right. And like if they crossed over here, they would be a fish out of water. Right, right. That's the one way to picture yeah. it, you know, and they need a pond... Or, right. or well, some so water if, to jump if into. If we have an invading and force. A computer would be yeah. their pond. Or yeah. their well, if we had an invading force on this Earth sphere, it would need to recreate its own natural environment so it could subsist here. Yes. And I think that's a and lot. And that of is the AI network, mm -hmm. most likely that. Right. Yeah. And it's highly efficient? It's highly efficient, and it's spread out throughout the galaxy, and most likely intergalactic okay well and this was fascinating to me too you were saying that some of the greys are avatars for humans are there like a suit yeah. thing that they slip into well no 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 the avatar thing it is a totally like a drone a mm -hmm. self-contained bipedal biological robot mm -hmm. that someone sitting in like a lounge chair is controlling Mm -hmm. with a like 160 degree visor over their head this chair has sensors 
that when they turn their head up or down and they got their hands in these gloves that have little clickers along each digit. Oh, okay. You Very know? sensitive to each yeah. movement of the, the hand. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And they move. <laughs> and, and they don't move their hands all the way. Right. But they can control it. Uh-huh. And they look like real beings, but you get no emotion or it's it's just like a robot. Okay. You get no emotion or no feeling from them at all. Uh-huh. And these people are drugged immediately, so they're drugged at the same time they're seeing this thing. Hmm. So they have it, th- that effect too. Okay, but is there like a gray being, or just put it, is this the human in the gray suit? Or are there humans over here removed it's, from this? Yeah, it's like a drone, like people fly drones okay, right. and shoot okay, so in they're another not country. In the, yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah. They could be thousands of miles away. Right, but this thing is being operated by something. So, okay. Yeah, they're operating something that's like thousands of miles away, mm-hmm. sitting in a chair. Ah, okay. So they're there all with their, they're all wired up and they've got their mask on and their yeah. fingers and they're doing this. And there's something else a thousand miles away that looks like a gray. Yeah. That's actually doing what they're telling it to do from here. Yeah. So. And, uh, wow, yeah. okay. So, so the people think that everything that's happening to them is happening to them by an alien and not by the government. Right, exactly. But they're, that's, that's not so this. so sophisticated, but yes. Oh, yeah. But that's not all of the people that are being uh-huh. abducted. Right. They are, there's people that are being abducted by, like, all these different groups. Uh-huh. And a lot of them pop in real quick, grab people, pop out before the secret space program can get in there and attack them, and then do what they're going to do, and then pop back, and then deliver the person back, or they just keep the person. Right. And that's why people come back with their shirts on backwards or mixed yeah. up clothes. Or somebody or else's clothes. Somebody else's clothes. Stuff or like that. they never come back. Uh, right. Timeline manipulation. Mm-hmm. And we talked about, I'll bring into what you were saying last night too, about how there's these various forms or universes that are all kind of stacked on each other in a way, but not disconnected. And then you started talking about torsion fields. Mm-hmm. And so if you want to just elaborate on what you understand about that. Do we have timelines or are there timelines? Well, how has time shifted? Yeah, let me, question. I'll read it exactly what it says. What do you know about timeline manipulation? Uh, Henry said, my paraphrase, that there were many attempts to fix the time loops that were created by humans and in T's, and that every time they tried to fix one, it just kept getting more and more complicated. Okay. I know that most of those were beginning to collapse and converge, and as that was happening, they were putting buffers on a lot of the temporal technology to prevent further splits mm-hmm. in timelines. When you say buffers on temporal technology, can you describe uh, well, it? Well, some of the craft use uh, temporal drives, mm-hmm. and those temporal drives could be used to travel from space-time to a time-space. Mm-hmm. They could go back in time. Mm-hmm. But through quantum physics, all these other realities, anything that can happen is happening in another reality. So you can segment yourself into another reality, and you can segment your group consciousness into another reality. Mm -hmm. But the reality that you were supposed to be in is still happening. Mm -hmm. You diverged from it. The timeline didn't diverge. You diverged Mm -hmm. from the timeline. Because, like I've said, everything's true and nothing's true. Mm -hmm. It depends on your perspective, where you're standing, and where you're looking from. So if I diverge from a timeline, just say me, a person goes, I'm moving my consciousness, I diverge from it. I break my chain or a... I break whatever, and I'm over here on this other timeline now. So now I've made a choice and I'm changing. But if a large mass of consciousness diverged from a specific timeline, because we were talking earlier that so much is about trying to keep us on some sort of, trying to keep the Earth from going into another... Vibration. Vibrational 
which would keep us automatically from, and I've often felt it's trying to keep us on a specific time track, like they're trying to keep us going down a track, like as if this track was laid down and we're supposed to stay on it. And so as a consciousness moves into something else, we're actually moving as a group. But there are par parallel Earths, parallel solar systems mm -hmm. of ours, parallel us's, that are going through this same journey mm -hmm. and need the same thing to happen. And they have a consciousness. Okay. At what point do our consciousnesses join? Yeah. We talk about we have a higher self and then you keep climbing that higher self until at, at some point self falls off mm -hmm. and then you just have higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then you go up to the super consciousness. Mm -hmm. Right. So you and that super consciousness transcends all those timelines, all those realities. Right. So that super consciousness is experiencing and making that journey. Yes. So when it comes down to it, mm -hmm. all the screwing around we're doing with the timelines and all that, we're not, the, the journey's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's realities where it, well, everything goes to hell mm -hmm. and all that. And if we want to experience that, we will. Mm -hmm. But the super consciousness that we all, our higher self all mm -hmm. goes up to mm -hmm. before the self drops off, is there. And it's, it's already there. And that's the great experiment. It's experiencing all these different timelines. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when it comes down to it, our self forget our higher self, how su it's only significant to us. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because well, as you're saying that, I'm seeing that the self, the true self, not the ego self, not the manufactured self, not even the, the experiential self, even though we've had these massive amounts of experience through time and space and who knows how long conscious you or I have been experiencing, that everything feels like it's collapsing. And I feel time is, in a certain way, the structures of it are mm -hmm. collapsing down to one single point. To a singularity. Of a consciousness. Yeah. And at that point... The same consciousness that split itself up into yeah. a trillion pieces is, is, now, is and, converging again. Right. And when, and when that happens, something else happens after that. And that's where I feel like... It's going to go for a new experience. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. But the, I guess the, the whole experiment in my mind, if I can just put it on a metaphysical plane, is that we've done this experiment. You know, oh, it's been over and over. Over and over. Expand, and, contract, yeah. expand, contract. And we're at a point where it's a potential for us to have a really different type of experience that is beyond anything we actually even have known before. So we do have to bring all the timelines together and all the memories and all the everything back together so and, and that is super from, consciousness yeah and from what they've been seeing that's just occurring on its own right well the more so we get the to go for the ride or we don't get to go for the ride yeah you know? the more we were trying to converge and make timelines go together the more we were screwing we it, up. it up yeah it's like it was elastic it was just leave it alone and it's just bringing itself back isn't that a beautiful way to uh actually live our lives you know yeah. we don't have to control it if we can just step into it if that's how i feel just step into it call it a great stream of intelligence that, yeah so thank you and that was all they had time for in that second conversation we do intend to record and release more and our friend has said that he would very much like to do this as he finds himself increasingly able to speak out and describe his experiences so, our intention is that there will be more to follow. There is likely to be extensive discussion about this on the Project Avalon Forum. And in a moment you'll see how you can apply to join us if you're watching this and you're not already a member. So, this is Bill Ryan signing off. And thank you for listening with me to this most extraordinary conversation.